Hi everyone, this is Cheryl Skolage and Kelly Maynard here for another installment of Lipedema Light Bites. This week we're talking about what is lipedema, as opposed to last week where we were talking about the definition of lipedema. And yes, there's really that much stuff to talk about. So we have plenty to cover today. Um, and, uh, oh, I can't scroll. That's right. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> we have to switch things up due to technical difficulties. It's a little, we have to remember what we're doing today. Yep. And so I just want to say thanks everyone for joining. So glad that you're here. Uh, be sure to give us a heart or a like um, to let us know if you like this, these videos, because we want to make sure that we're, we're uh, meeting your questions and, and uh, doing, we're trying to do this all for you guys. All right. So, so uh, give us some love. Um, I'm Cheryl with Lipedema Diva. And I'm Kelly with Wild Heart Wellness. We're super excited to be doing another video for you this week. A bit, it's been funny this week calling this our big words video, trying That's to explain funny. a little bit about some of those crazy terms we keep hearing on webinars and reading in research papers. Yeah, some of the videos that are out there have some really big words, and um, I, I think you're going to see a lot of them in the presentation today. Um, but one of the, the big questions that we get all the time in our group is, is lipedema a real disease? A lot of the women in our, in our group will go to their doctor, and if they're not going to a lipedema specialist, their doctor's just not going to know about lipedema. And one of the first things they do is they say, lipedema, that's just an internet thing. It's not a real disease. But we're here to tell you it is a real disease. Um, all of the research is showing that there are differences with women who have lipedema. And one of the first things is that it's inflammation of the adipose tissue. And the adipose tissue is the fat that's being carried on the hips and thighs. Um, that, that's the adipose at opposed to the visceral fat, which is around the stomach and the internal organs. Yeah, that's true. And we've been learning also that adipose tissue is a kind of connective tissue in the body. It's a loose connective tissue. And that may be why you're hearing it described as a connective tissue disorder. That's a recent kind of a transition from it just being a fat disorder. So we need to understand exactly what the adipose tissue is we're talking about. It's not, it's not the fat that Cheryl just described like around your organs. It's this fat, the fat that's on your hips, thighs, even upper arms. So that is what we're talking about with these next couple of points. Yes. Uh, and so what they found uh, with this inflammation is the fat that's in this tissue has, um, a hypertrophy, which means an increase in volume, and also hyperplasia, which is an increase in number. So not only are our fat cells larger than most people's fat cells, but there's also more of them there. And because of this inflammation, it's increasing the size and increasing the number of the fat cells in this area. Yeah, that's really important to know because we tend to wonder what's going on with these fat cells it seems like they're just multiplying well maybe that really is what's happening so um under the skin you can see some of the videos that have been shown recently have shown some slides of the adipose tissue and they're showing that in a normal tissue per square inch there will be a certain number of cells with lipedema they're seeing a bigger number of cells and also that they are larger than normal. And so that is not a myth. That is part of why this is a real disease. There are actually differences in the, the tissue in the cells themselves. And I didn't put it on that particular slide, but they talk a lot about the interstitial spaces. Right. And so that's the space in between these uh, fat cells. And that space tends to be larger as well, um, holding uh, a lot of fluid in there. And that pushes the fat cells too far away from um, the, the source of uh, oxygen and the source of uh, sugar and so forth. And so these, these cells are, um, 
well, it, that kind of drops down to the tissue hypoxia. So as the disease progresses, as the progression happens with lipedema, you get insufficient vascularization, which means that the little veins that are, are being built, they're, they're not large enough and not long enough to get to the fat cells where the fat cells need all of that energy, basically. Um, we have uh, poor venous return, which means the veins uh, trying to get the blood back up to the heart, um, that is poor and poor lymphatic drainage. And so the lymph is unable to, to drain all of this extra fluid in that interstitial space. So the, the tissue starts dying. That's the tissue hypoxia. It doesn't have the oxygen and it starts dying. And this becomes a vicious circle. So it creates more inflammation. We get more progression. We get all of, all of this just going in this vicious circle. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's hard to know where to interrupt that cycle to help lipedema sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the things they're trying to figure out is where does it start? Which thing causes the next thing? Um, so it's, it's a really complicated disease. And as we said, it is a real disease. These, these types of things, they're really digging into the research and finding out that these things really do exist and they're different from regular obesity, different from lymphedema in a lot of cases, um, very specific to whatever's going on in the cells and in the tissues of women with lipedema. Um, the next thing is that these fat cells are not just fat cells. You think fat cells, well, those are just cells with fat, but in lipedema, they're finding some very odd things. And one of those things is GAG, and that is very short for glycomino, glycosaminoglycans. Um, glycosaminoglycans are just links of sugars, and they're found in everyone's body. That is not the part that's unusual. Um, these glycosaminoglycans, it's very hard to say. Um, they, I'm so impressed that you're able to say it. I just say I, GAG. <laughs> oh, so the, we'll just say gag for short. I heard Dr. Herb say it last, last week on a video. So I feel comfortable that it's acceptable to just not stumble over your word and just say gag. Um, but the unusual thing about these in lipedema tissue is that they bind with sodium and water. They have found extra sodium and extra water in cells of women and tissues of women who have lipedema. The thing that just shocked me when I first heard it was that these, when it binds to the cells, in the cells to the water and the sodium, instead of it being a fluid where it can flow in and out of the cells in a normal fashion, inside of our lipedema cells, it turns into this gel. And that is why I think gag is like a good word because that is just, that's kind of icky. Like you have this gel gunk in your um, fat tissue um, that's in lymphedema they have found that the fluid is free flowing it doesn't turn into this gel consistency um, but in lipedema that gel is bound inside the tissue it makes your fat tissue heavier than normal which a lot of women report they weigh a, an amount that seems too heavy for their body size that may be contributing um, it also leads to more inflammation, and as the gel stays in there, it's stagnant because it can't move out of the cell, it becomes fibrotic tissue, and that's a hardening of your tissue. So again, we're in this another vicious cycle that exists within lipedema, and I think it's really interesting um, that it turned in that it turns into that gel that explained it a lot to me about why I can't seem to lose this extra fluid in my body. So let's see some differences that we can find. And so lipedema is different from obesity. Now you can also have 
clinical obesity. So we're not just talking about BMI, but we're, we're talking about where you're carrying your fat. So lipedema is carrying that adipose fat that we we're talking about around the hips and the thighs. And obesity is carrying the fat around the stomach area, around those vital organs. Uh, they found that there's a difference in the amount of sodium, just as Kelly had mentioned, in the fat cells between obesity and lipedema. In lipedema, we're carrying a lot more sodium in our cells. Yes, we are. And Next one, because that, that dot looks a, a little... <laughs> yeah. uh, the the uh, cytokine levels, um, there's a particular one. So, you know, there, there's all of these different proteins in our bodies. And one of these proteins is is increased in lipedema. And so they found this difference from lipedema compared to obesity. Yes, and with that, we don't wanna get into the science behind all of this stuff because it's very complicated. But that particular um, protein that she's talking about, the one that's labeled on our list as VEGFC, that is for the formation of lymphatic vessels and they found that if you have too much of that, it can lead to capillary permeability. And you may have heard on a webinar or seen or read in some research that our capillaries have some leakiness going on. Um, so the increase in that particular protein that's supposed to help with lymphatic vessels, um, when it overproduces, that could be leading to some of that um, leaky capillary problem and having even more fluid in the cells and tissues. Um, so the Which last again, thing is to a vicious cycle, man. Another vicious cycle with lipedema, <laughs> <laughs> showing us once again that lipedema is a real disease. Um, yes. <laughs> all these things that we're reviewing here, they there is research. Then they've looked into all of these things, and these are some of the things that they found that are different for lipedema than for other conditions. Um, and then really quick about metabolic syndrome. That may be a term that people have heard. Um, unless you are obese, in addition to having lipedema, usually people do not have the markers for metabolic syndrome. And quickly, those are like increased blood pressure, increased triglyceride levels, blood sugar, a larger waist circumference, and a decrease in the good um, HDL cholesterol. So all those together would point to a metabolic syndrome problem. And I just feel that this slide is just so visual and, and uh, just so meaningful. Um, with lipedema, we have these nodules under the skin this is the fibrotic tissue, those kind of pearls that I, I, I'm sure that you've all heard about, that people are talking about, that they feel underneath the skin, um, those bumps and lumps. Um, that's the fat cell becoming fibrotic and creating this, this nodule. Um, and so this particular photo is from uh, Dr. Jamie Schwartz. Um, and uh, he has removed some of these nodules from various lipedema women and, and uh, took a slide to uh, give us a, a little bit of a visual so that we can actually see that the lipedema fat truly is different from other types of fat. All right. Our lipedema is characterized by several different things that make it different from lymphedema. And we just wanted to run over a few of those really quick, some of the most common differences that have been noted. And one of those is a disproportion between the upper and lower halves of your body. Um, it doesn't really matter if you're like a size two on the top and a six or eight on the bottom, or if you're a size 20 on the top and a size 40 on the bottom. There's a, it doesn't have to do with how big your body is. It has to do with the top, like your waist and trunk being smaller than your hips and your thighs, if that is where your lipidema exists. It, it can be a little confusing because if your arms are also affected, then it may appear that your 
the top of your body is larger. So we would focus on the waist and trunk and then compare it with the body from the waist down. Right. It, one of the other things that is different is that lipedema is bilateral. So what happens on the right side of the body is also happening on the left side of the body. It's symmetric. For some reason, these fat deposits are depositing symmetrically across the body, which it seems kind of unusual, right? Um, but that is one of the very definite differences between lipedema and lymphedema. Typically, lymphedema will be just one limb. So it'll be one leg, one arm uh, type issue. Um, so uh, there's primary and secondary lymph edema. And uh, uh, so with lip edema, you can get secondary lymph edema. And so that just puts that whole extra layer on there and makes everything even that more confusing. Um, so you can have lymph edema as well. But the that we're trying to uh, describe when someone would talk about lip edema as opposed to a primary diagnos di diagnosis of lymph edema, um, and the lip edema will be bilateral and symmetric. Right. Um, we get a lot of questions about from women saying, do I have lip edema? And we say, well, it looks like, you know, your right leg is twice as big as your left. So we would suggest you check with your doctor to see if maybe you have a primary lymphedema going on rather than just lymph lipedema by itself. Um, the next thing is that lipedema is a progressive disease. That does not mean that you're guaranteed to progress all the way to the most serious stages, um, but it does mean that once you have a diagnosis of lipedema, it can progress in a predictable way um, all the way up to stage three. Um, again, not all women do progress, but there is a pattern of progression if your disease does progress. And I think it's important to note, a lot of women have had success sort of limiting that progression or um, slowing down the progression based on their nutrition choices and their lifestyle choices. So it's not without hope. Very true, very true. Um, one other uh, item is uh, the capillaries are very fragile. Uh, and so we kind of alluded to that uh, uh, before, talking about how some of the, uh, the capillaries have some trouble uh, being created at, uh, quickly enough to get to the, the fat cells. The body's trying to make so many so quickly when we become inflamed that those capillaries are very small, uh, very weak, and often very leaky. And our next point is about Samaro sign. I have talked to Dr. Samaro. He's a doctor out of Spain who specializes in lipedema. And he has discovered that there is a place on your leg, under your knee, on the inside of your shin. It's a very specific place. And um, if you will go ahead and Google lipedema Samaro sign, he has an image that you'll come across where he shows where to do this test. But you will put pressure on that place and it hurts a lot. Like it hurts more than normal pressure. If you would apply that same pressure to another part of your body, even a place with lipedema normally, um, that place under your knee next to your shin will hurt an incredibly greater amount. And I've had a lot of women do this test, just asking them if they would try it out in different lipedema groups, um, different populations. And I think one of the important things with Samaro sign is that Dr. Samaro reports being able to use this as a helpful diagnostic tool, even in with women who have stage one lipedema, which is the earliest stage, and don't have many other outward signs. So they may not appear to have lipedema, but this test will still come back positive for him when he puts pressure on that point. 
So that could be really important to early detection and early intervention um, in women, especially I think with maybe um, teenagers or in young adulthood, when women just may start to think there might be something going on that they don't quite understand. We, uh, women with lipedema also have uh, higher joint hypermobility than the normal population. Um, uh, Dr. Hertz showed, I believe it was two years ago um, in her research that hypermobility increases with lipedema stage. Um, a number of women with lipedema also have uh, a comorbidity, which means a, a disease that occurs more frequently called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And that's characterized by joint hypermobility as well. Um, so if you do tend to have uh, a lot of joints that kind of are easily um, bent in the opposite direction of where they tend to usually go. Um, if you can touch your uh, palms or your hands to the floor when you bend over, um, you might want to also look into Ehlers-Danlos syndrome um, just to, to double check so that you can kind of start uh, uh, preparing your joints and, and uh, uh, taking care of them make sure that they don't get damaged any additional. And um, I'll add to that, there's a very good checklist that the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome Society, I think that's correct, um, they have on their website. It's a free checklist. And while it's not for you to diagnose, it's a very good tool for you to kind of self-assess and see if Ehlers-Danlos might be creating a problem for you. And I think that's where I first realized that I had hypermobile joints because I never had thought about it before until I realized it was a comorbidity and I used that handy checklist and it helped me um, assess exactly what was going on. And our last point on this slide is that it's characterized by non-pitting edema. Edema is a swelling fluid in the tissue and non-pitting means that when you push on it, on your tissue, it doesn't stay indented. So we have a little slide. So this is pitting edema and where they're pushing on the person's leg. And then if you see, they removed their finger and you can still see the dent where they had pressed. If that happens to you when you press on an inflamed or swollen area of your body, that's something that you'll need to get checked with your doctor because that's not a normal um, that's not a normal sign of lipedema unless you also have a secondary lymphedema diagnosis. Correct. And so that's about it for today. Um, we do have um, a slide where you can get some additional information, and we'll also put it in the links for the video down below. Um, my website is lipedemadiva.com. Uh, Kelly's is wildheart.health. Um, she can also be reached through email at info at wildheart.health. Um, we have a couple Facebook groups as well for patients. It's lipedema and food sensitivities. Take control of your lipedema. And for providers, it's lipedema and food sensitivities healthcare community. I hope you guys will join us and uh, take a look at some of the information. We have tons of information uh, in our Facebook groups out there. Um, and we're just so glad that you uh, attended this particular training with us. Um, and I hope you guys are looking forward to additional ones. So give us some love down below. Let us know that you liked it, okay? <laughs>